Decisions, decisions, decisions. That's what we're talking about today. You know, we all make decisions every day. From the moment you wake up and you decide to hit the snooze button one more time, as I did this morning. In companies though, you know, there's a tendency to wanna uh, use data to make decisions. Seems obvious. Uh, so in this video, I wanna give you six strategies on how to actually do this. Uh, what are some of the ways that you can make this easier and not so burdensome? Let's jump in. Hi there, my name is Ruben Ugarte and I'm a professional treasure hunter, I think I'd like to describe myself. And I come into companies and I'm looking for those hidden treasures, you know, in the data, their decisions, their people, and try to figure out how to turn those into growth or reduce costs or whatever it may be. Decisions is something we have heard about all our lives. You know, from a young age, we're told, make the right decisions. If you made the wrong decision, you should not have done that. Now in companies, we're making decisions all the time. Campaigns, products, what to say to a customer. And data can play a fantastic role in helping support those decisions. Not so much drive them, but help them. The whole data-driven versus not, I think is a whole different video, which maybe I'll make one day. But today, I wanna to share six strategies to help this process of using data to support decisions be a little more smooth. I want you to think about cooking shows. If you love the Food Network, or whatever the equivalent is uh, in your country, you always notice that they have all the ingredients in front of them. You know, before they start cooking, everything's just within the reach of wherever they are, you know, the stove or the knives or whatever. And that's what I think what makes cooking more enjoyable. You know, the worst time to look for an ingredient is while your food is burning. So if you have everything in front of you, you can quickly set them up, organize it, and move through the process. Now the setup might take a few minutes, but it makes all the difference in the world. And the same is true with data. If we have the right setup, it's much easier to reach for the right KPI or metric as we need it than to scramble for for a number that we may not find in time. So strategy one, centralize all your reports and dashboards. As the company gets larger, so does the number of reports. You wanna centralize all of this into some kind of wiki, repository, Google Doc, paper, whiteboard, doesn't really matter. The point is, what's the central place where everyone can go, find the report they need, and avoid duplicating effort, you know? If something already exists, use that, or maybe build upon it. So centralizing, just simply making data organized and available can go a long way. Strategy two, think about the questions on your mind. You know, I, I think approaching the data, hoping to learn something, is a bit inefficient. Instead, Instead, I think it's much more interesting to approach it with the right questions. You know, I want to understand why we don't sell as much in the Northeast versus the Southwest. I want to understand why this group of customers stays around much longer than this other group of customers. So the right questions guide you and it makes it much easier to find something in the data. At the end of the day, data can tell you almost anything and it can almost be used to support anything. You can sort of tweak around statistics, the numbers to, to sort of prove a point. So you wanna have the right questions before you really dive in. Number three, use my simple framework. You know, I, I've spoken about this before in multiple videos. Uh, I call it the three Ps, people, process, providers. It's a pyramid, so the bottom layer is people, the middle layer is process and the top one is providers and you go through it you know people is simply who's going to be using the data process is how you're going to actually go through it are you going to have regular meetings are you going to have someone process the data analyze it like a data analyst and providers is just technology what tools or software implementations do you need and this is a simple structure they can use to define a strategy and organize what you're doing around data number four track fewer kpis maybe slightly controversial i think companies track too many kpis you know there's so many things that you have no idea what's going on. Imagine if you were driving and the car gave you an update on everything that was going on, every little part that was moving the car. It'd be impossible to drive. It'd be overwhelming to know everything that's going on when most of the things are fine. And the things that need to send out wouldn't. So if you're running out of gas, you probably get lost in the noise. So the same thing happens here. You want to track the right number of KPIs to avoid being overwhelmed. And you can do this in a few ways. You can organize them, right? So you might have your, your daily KPIs versus your monthly KPIs. You might only look at at very specific things at very specific times, maybe in a seasonality format. I think you should interrogate all your KPIs. If a number goes up and down, what's the behavior that will change in you or your team? If the answer is clear, you might have some kind of vanity KPI. If this number goes down, but we wouldn't change anything, then why are you tracking it? So think about how many KPIs you're tracking and if you can reduce it to a handful, the core, the important few. Strategy five, WDIM. What does this mean? What does, it, what does it mean for us if this insight is true? If we realize that most of our customers all congregate around Wisconsin. What does it mean if the majority of our traffic hits the mobile part of our website? You know, what does it mean if our customers are canceling after 30 days? This is a really tough question. Data can tell you all these patterns and trends, insights, but at the end of the day, 
You're trying to understand what does it really mean? Why should we care? What should we do? This is the question you want to debate in meetings, conversations, water coolers. Number six, change the role of data. I think data driven is an oxymoron. I don't think companies should be data driven at all. I think data supported is much better because there'll be situations where you won't have data. COVID-19 has shown this for all governments around the world. At the beginning, there was very little data and they still had to make decisions. And now they have data and they still sort of struggle to make decisions. The presence of data doesn't make it easier to make decisions. Being better at making decisions makes you better at making decisions. So you don't want to put this emphasis on the data that's going to solve everything, that's going to answer everything you need, and it's going to help you tackle every problem. Just think about data as supporting you in your important decisions. But if it's not there, it's fine. You can still move on. And that's all I have for today. Make sure to subscribe, like, look around those buttons here on YouTube. I post videos on a weekly basis, breakdowns, case studies, who knows what else. I think you'll be notified once you subscribe and do the, the bell. There's also two links in the description. There's a link to my weekly newsletter, The Growth Needle. It's similar content, but in a text format. And there is a link to Twitter. I just started using Twitter. I'm still quite new to it, but it's a great way to follow me and keep up to date with some of the latest updates I'm doing. Final question for you. What's one thing you learned today? Put it in the comments. I would love to hear. And other people I think might be interested in learning as well. Talk soon.